Hello and welcome to Garen Reaver's Top 5. Today I'm going to be talking about my Top 5 Nostalgic Games. These are the games from my childhood that had such a large impact that I just keep thinking about them even to this day. Some I've replayed since, some I haven't, and these are just the best ones I remember from my childhood. Two things to remember, first of all these are my personal opinions so please don't tell me I'm wrong, and obviously these are limited to the ones that I played as a child, and the ones that had such a large impact they're worth mentioning now. Number 5. Civ 2 Test of Time. Released originally in 1999 when I was 6, this is not the first Civ game I played. I actually think I played... I th I think it was Civ 2, I'm not 100% sure on that, but oh, I spent so many hours on this game. I barely understood what I was doing, it was just, I was just sort of doing things that proved through trial and error the way to win, and I didn't understand sort of any of the, the concepts of the game, any of anything like that, not even the government I really understood, but I often cheated and just did it for the sheer fun of it. It was because of this game that I was reluctant to pick up Civ 5 originally, because it was like, well, you know, I, I love Civ 2 Test of Time, I don't know that I need to play a more, more recent version. I'm so glad I did, and currently Civ 5 is my most played game on Steam with over 500 hours. One thing that this game did do is it taught me all about the different forms of government. Anarchy, despotism, monarchy, uh, democracy, I learned what they meant just so that I could do the government system in that game, because that was a sort of core part of the game, choosing a type of government and what that meant for it. As much as I love this game, I've not gone back to it recently, I've not played it in years, I used to play it on one of my old laptops that could run it very easily, but I don't know if modern computers can. After all, it is incredibly old. Number 4. Baldur's Gate. This was originally released in 1998 when I was also 6, and this is the first real RPG I ever played. I was introduced to it by my parents, they had, uh, I don't even know if this was sort of the original one or if this was a sort of special release or anything like that, but this came with the sort of expansion, Tales from the Swords Coast I think is what it was called. It was in a 6 CD box, and I even remember where the bloody things switch over. I've talked about Baldur's Gate previously in the top 5, I can't remember which one exactly. But it, uh, it like, there was the Friendly Arm Inn, Beragos, N uh, Nashkel, Baldur's Gate itself I think had one or two CDs, and then there were the sort of the extra bits as well. Yeah, they, it was such a big game, and I played it so much. Despite what you may expect, I did actually finish it. I remember getting to the end of the story. I did cheat a lot. I used item codes to spawn in the best items, like there was a flaming sword that gibbed basically any enemy in one or two hits, and I think I cheated to skip entire chapters of the game, but I did complete it. And like with Civ 2 teaching me about the forms of government, this game taught me about item codes in games. I had, must have been 10, 15 pages of A4 printed off, each with all the different item codes, and I sort of tested so many of them until I found that flaming sword. This one I have played very recently, it was just last year I was playing it on the Enhanced Edition on Steam, which is a really good sort of remake, revitalization of it, bringing it up to modern resolution, adding things, it's pretty good, you should check it out. Number 3. Age of Wonders. This one came out in 2000, a little bit later, I was about 7 at the time, and I didn't play this until I was a little bit older than Baldur's Gate and Civ, but I did spend a lot of time on this game as well. Most of that was in the editor that came with it, it was a sort of separate program that you launched, well, separately, and it allowed you to create scenarios and put in triggers, uh, customise items, heroes, completely make the terrain on any size map. It was beautiful. I barely played the campaign, to be honest, I think I got stuck on the first level. I played the tutorial, but the actual campaign I just got stuck really early. Most of my time was spent making up stories in the editor, creating races and what I thought the races would be like and creating oh, vast kingdoms in this editor. And I didn't actually cheat with this one, this is the first one on the list that I didn't cheat on, but uh, I, it did make me experiment with playstyles, like I played that tutorial at least ten times each time choosing a different way to play it. This is another one that I've not replayed in years, however I do have it on Steam, it was released on Steam and I will be getting back to it at some point. Hopefully it comes with the editor, I will be crushed if it doesn't. 
Number two, Discworld 2, Missing Presumed. All right, I talked about this one a bit in the top five adventure games. Spoiler alert. Uh, this one is known as Morality Bites in North America and res res was released in 1996 when I was four. I don't think I played it when I was four. I don't remember exactly when I did play it, but I played it a fair bit with my parents, mostly. And my family still reference it sometimes to this day. Uh, as I said in the Adventure Games one, there's the that doesn't work. Even my parents reference that, and they don't do much referencing. This one I played semi-recently. I found an emulated DOS, MS-DOS thing on the internet, and I played it through that. So it's not been that long since I played this one. And finally, number one, Settlers 2 Veni Vidi Vici. This was also released in 1996 when I was three, you know, it was a bit earlier in the year. And I loved it. I loved it for its art style, mostly. I barely played the story. It, at the time, it wasn't very good. You know, I mean, I wasn't three when I played this. I was a bit older than that. But yeah, the story didn't interest me at all. I was mostly on the free play, either against one or just no enemies, just to build and expand. I did play the later Settlers games, but the art style changed and didn't catch me. It wasn't anywhere near as cute. For example, my favourite bit, my favourite thing to do, and I must have spent hours doing this, was you could get a pig farm and you could set up a camera, uh, so there's like a separate camera in the corner of the screen, and I would fix a camera on the pig farm because of the piglets. The piglets were adorable. I absolutely loved just watching them play and roll about. I remember this fondly as one of my favourite childhood games. If not my favourite, then I, it's certainly one that I was sort of most nostalgic for. Partly because I couldn't play it for years because no bloody PC would run the thing. I mean, it came out when I was three. That's ancient. Not even, like, semi-modern computers could run it. Then last year, I found it on GOG and I bought it. And I played it uh, most of the campaign last year and had an amazing time. And that about wraps up my incredibly nostalgic list. What were your nostalgic games from your childhood? And if you're like a teenager, you probably don't have nostalgic games from your childhood, being barely out of it yourself. But still, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you have any suggestions for future top or bottom fives. And remember that you can get up to a day's early access for this and other series by pledging to my Patreon linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you later.